Hi, this is Dr. Dan from Vitamin Pro, and I want to do a little update on, on diagnosing gluten sensitivity. Now, most people, of course, uh, diagnose themselves. You know, they, they read about it and they think, well, you know, maybe some of these problems that I'm having, this, this chronic inflammation or autoimmune disorder or whatever, might be related to gluten. So they go out on a gluten free diet, and sure enough, they feel better, and all is good. So I think that's valid. So if that's the way you did it, you know, that's, that's absolutely fine and probably in some respects the best way in many cases. The trouble is, is that won't catch everything because a lot of gluten problems take decades to develop and, and to become symptomatic, you know, it might be something like osteoporosis or gluten ataxia. So if you've got something like that going on, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to want to wait for the symptoms to show up in order to go on a gluten-free diet, see if they go away. Because once you've had that much um, bone damage, or um, brain damage, you know, who knows if that's, if that's going to come back all the way. So, in that case, um, your best indicator might be um, maybe a, another autoimmune disorder that seems totally unrelated, like maybe a Hashimoto's thyroiditis picks up, or maybe a first degree relative that you know is also insensitive. If that's the case, you probably are too. So it's good to get tested. Now, as far as testing goes, uh, the testing isn't perfect, but it's getting better, and, and I would say it's pretty good these days. But I'm talking about testing that's done by, by specialty labs, not what you're going to find at LabCorp or Quest, or you know, your garden variety lab, because they're still going to look for just maybe you know, tissue transglutaminase, or maybe some gluten, uh, gliadin antibodies or something. But you know, those only show up if you've got a fairly advanced celiac disorder. And now, and since I brought up celiac, uh, keep in mind that even if you have full-blown full blown celiac disease and you show up at a medical doctor's office, chances are that they're going to miss it anyway. In fact, the chances are about 2% that they'll pick it up because, you know, most doctors just are not up to speed on this. And I think that's going to get better. But for the moment, you're kind of on your own in that regard. So what do you do if you really want to know and say a gluten-free diet doesn't seem to matter either way, but you still don't feel right. So how do you find out? Well, we use a couple of uh, labs to, uh, to help us with this. And one is Cyrix Labs, and they do a, a, a really nice antibody panel uh, on, on your blood test. Now, we've used Sentero Labs for a couple of years too, and we like their work. You know, we've had some excellent results, but they're not testing the wide range of antibodies that Cyrix is. But they do do a stool testing, which you know has some credibility, and they also do uh, Interlab also does some genetic testing, which which is very helpful as well. So those are a couple of things we do now. Most people who have gluten sensitivity are also sensitive to other foods. So to, in order to find out what's really going to help you get well, you're probably going to want to do an Alcat test. Now we used to recommend Cyrix Labs or A4, and we're, we're starting to switch that over to the Alcat. Uh, Alcat um, is, is far more extensive and I like the way they test it. So there will be more uh, information on that on, my, on the website at Ovitamin Pro. But that's a basic update on, um, on diagnosing gluten sensitivity today. Um, this is May 2012. Hopefully that's helpful for you. Thanks a lot.